Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone all over the world. You are watching International Affairs on Nizal and Co, the new avant-garde, uh, millennium avant-garde uh, online variety talk show. And we are here today for good reason. As we know, the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians is rapidly escalating and it has come into one of the worst rounds of violence between the two sides of in the last uh, several years today we're going to talking we'll be, we'll be talking on this particular areas or this particular issue that uh, will be very much interested for every one of us to know because we are concerned that possible in in what uh, uh, the united nation representative has said uh, a warning that the situation was escalating and it could be towards a full scale war whatever it is we have two prominent figures with us today to discuss about this, to be talking, to be sharing, to converse or to have a conversation on this. And we have none other than, first let me introduce to you, from Kuala Lumpur, though he is actually a Palestinian, um, uh, Dr. Sharif Abu Shamala, the CEO of uh, Ankuts Foundation Malaysia. All right. And we have with us also uh, Mr. Stuart Ward, a lifelong social justice activist whom I had interviewed him quite some time ago talking about America. Now we're talking about Middle East. We have moved from America to the Middle East. Hello, uh, Mr. Stuart and hello, Dr. Shar uh, Sharif. Hello and right. thank you. Mr. Nice meeting you. Yes. Yes. And I wish all of you, both of you and all of you around the world, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, inshallah. All right. Let's begin with this issue of uh, this uh, latest development in uh, the Middle East. Now, I do not need to repeat what has been said around the world by all big medias. My point here is, which I hope uh, this question might be uh, uh, to Dr. Sharif. Now, why, why did Israel or the Zionist Israel do what they did? You know, at the end of Ramadan, they attacked. What prompted that? What's the strategy behind it? Is it, is it to do with uh, creating a kind of animosity or for whatever reason, maybe you might know better because you are actually from that side of the world. Maybe you can explain yes. to us, Dr. Sharif, share your thoughts about this. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and the greeting uh, for you, Brother Nizar, Nizal and uh, my yes. colleague, uh, Mr. Stuart and your team and everyone who is watching us. Uh, thank you for having us uh, this night to discuss and to talk about uh, the current issue in Gaza and Beit al uh, Your question is uh, difficult and easy. But let me <laughs> try to try to answer this question. I believe uh, there are two factors uh, behind the uh, the behavior of Israel in last uh, in the current situation. The deep one, the deep strategy of Israel to ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people and to get rid to get rid them and to kick them out of Palestine in all means. This is the deep reason about all conflict, about all aggression against the Palestinian, all attacks, because Israel believe in uh, that the Jewish state, a pure state for Jewish, even it is on the account of the Palestinian people or it will cause the death of the Palestinian people or kicking them out of Palestine or displacing them. But the direct reason for the recent uh, escalation, it is, it, it is by the Israeli aggression which started in Jerusalem when they start to uh, want to confiscate, want to claim Sheikh Jarrah uh, area, neighborhood, which is historically a Palestinian uh, neighborhood uh, in uh, Beit al Maqdis in East Jerusalem, which was established by Jordanian government when it was controlling or uh, it was the authority in East Jerusalem before 1967 and after 1948. 
the Jordanian government gave the land to the 28 families of Palestinian refugees, and they gave them mm -hmm. the ownership of the land to establish their homes and to establish their new neighborhood. Then they will no longer be refugees and will be uh, Jordanian citizens at that time. In 1972, the settlers start to lie, start to claim the land. It was when they started to claim the land in 1972, it was a joke. It was a joke. But those who are the settlers who stole in Palestine previously, they lie, then they believe in what they lies. They believe in their lies, then they brought the issue to the Israeli court. And the ironic thing, uh, the Palestinians and the settlers should go to the Israeli court formed by a settler, a colonial government. So it is by default the occupation uh, court will be in, in, on, in the benefit of the settlers. So the Palestinians lose one house in 2009. They lose second two houses in 2012. And today, they, all the neighborhood is threatened to be uh, evicted and the Palestinian to be uh, displaced from their homes and the settlers to confiscate the land and homes against the will of the justice, against the will of rights against of human rights and against of all sins yeah. The, yeah the most funny thing in the last situation in Sheikh Jarrah that the Israeli court asked the Palestinian the owners of the land and the settlers to reach a deal then the settlers offer the Palestinian people to to give them the land by tenancy agreement so the settlers mm -hmm consider themselves the owners of the land, then they will give the, the, the land to the Palestinian to be as tenant, and the agreement should be finished when the one who will sign the agreement die. Means, mm. if the Palestinian agree on this, they will recognize the ownership of the settlers on the land. This is the first. The second, in any time, can the settlers kill the Palestinian who signed the agreement, then they can confiscate the land totally without any delay. This escalation and this issue led to another issue, which, which is the aggression against the worshippers in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, at attacking Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in very brutal behavior in 26th of Ramadan and 28th of Ramadan. Then they, this brought the Palestinian response and to reply, which made the, uh, the conflict between the settlers and the occupation and the resistance faction, especially in Gaza. So you mean to say that it begins with Sheikh Jarrah, uh, issue and prompted it and then escalated by the attack on the Muslims or the prayers, the Muslims who did their prayers at the al -Aqsa Definitely Mosque. right, definitely right, but, but mm. just we should keep in mind this, what we are suffering today started when the occupation start, started in yeah, 1948. Yes. Yes, yes, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know, I, I'm so sad because this night is the night of 15th of May, which is a very yes. painful uh, memory for the Palestinians yes. and the freedom yes. world, which is the Nakba. Nakba. All right. Well, let's listen to a friend of ours who is somehow related to some of the superpowers by, by virtue of his position as a British and at the same time a Swedish, I heard. So can you say, can you can you say something about this situation? Is it actually a, I mean, it started with, long time ago until now and is gated recently by the Shejara as what uh, Dr. Sharif has said and also is you know escalated by what's happening uh, in Aqsa. Now my point is this is there any uh, you know um, invisible hands of the superpowers that is also participating in arranging all this for some reason? 
Well, that's a very good question, Nizal, I must say. Uh, very perceptive of you, because I'm getting the implication of your question. Uh, before I get into the details, yes, uh, I uh, am born and brought up in the UK, and I feel as a British citizen in that uh, this whole situation has been brought about by the former colonial power, the United Kingdom, that it is my duty as a British citizen to try my very best in my little way to do something about it. And that's what I've been doing a large part of my life. And uh, I, I would like to echo the words as well of Dr. Sharif, that not only is the situation right now, but the whole complex of Israel-Palestine difficult, but at the same time easy. And. Uh, Dr. Sharif, I think, was describing a situation that I also absolutely agree with, that what I am suspecting here is that all this is part of that plan that the Israelis have always had ever since the days of the so-called founding father, David Ben-Gurion, who made it quite clear that in no way was there going to be a Palestinian state and would Palestinians have equal rights to the Israeli Jews. And that is exactly the same thing that, as I call him, Satan Yahoo is saying today. He has said many times that never on his watch are the Palestinians going to get a state. So like just as the and I'm sorry to use these words and, and to draw this uh, comparison, but I think it's fair that the Nazis in Europe in the 30s and 40s had their final solution to exterminate the Jews in the same way these Israeli uh, leaders of today, Jewish leaders of today, have a final solution to rid Palestine of Palestinians, just as Dr. Sharif was saying. We are seeing it before our very eyes. And uh, Setanyahu is uh, in exactly the same mold as, the, uh, as David Ben-Gurion. So when you see the, 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 the whole thing that, that started this whole thing off this time. Let, let's say, let's establish this as well. This is not the first time we're seeing all this. It's a regular occurrence. And the harassment, the persecution, the dispossession of the Palestinians is happening every single day of some kind, not to the extent that we're seeing right now, of course. But when when the Israel actually goes in to the third most holiest site of Islam, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, on the most important day of Ramadan, the most important festival of the year for Muslims, and fires tear gas, stun grenades, and rubber-coated bullets at people, whereby I think it's about a 500 were injured finally, where some lost their eyes and limbs, they do something like that, as you said in the introduction, Nizal. Of course, they know. And were they consciously, were they consciously provoking what we are seeing now? Or rather, was Netanyahu, Satanyahu, deliberately provoking all this to increase his chances of remaining prime minister of Israel? and thereby not only rem remaining crime minister of Israel, but also not having to go to prison. Because as soon as, as he's mm. not the crime minister of Israel, he will be in a position whereby he can be sent to prison for his corruption. So all these things are kind of, as far as I can see it, it it's logical mm. that this is what it's all adding up to. And when I hear... Another important aspect of this whole complex is American involvement. American involvement. And when Joe Biden, a man who has once upon a time said that if Israel didn't exist, then we would have had to have invented it, is, is refusing to talk about the rights of the Palestinians to defend themselves. These are the ones without a military, hardly a police force, and get zero money in military aid from the Americans, whilst Israel is getting 10 million of American taxpayer dollars a day, a day in military aid. No wonder they have an Iron Dome defense system and state-of-the-art uh, military armaments, F-16s, state-of-the-art drones, and, and precision, uh, 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 precision missiles 
uh, all provided and funded by the US of A. Palestine has nothing of this. Gaza has nothing of this. They are sending puny homemade rockets to defend themselves. And wow, how they're doing it so well under these very difficult circumstances. I commend them on their defense. I don't commend war. But you see, war too. War is, is also another word. Is it right to use the word war here? Or the, the word conflict? Because both those words denote two equal parties. And as I've just described, in no way are we talking about two equal parties here. Right. Good. Speaking of this, uh, uh, Dr. Sharif and also uh, Stuart, what I find it very interesting or very uh, astonishing this particular time is that the balance of power between uh, the Israelis and the uh, capacity of the Palestinians. Now, all this while we've seen the retaliation from Palestine has to be merely throwing stones, and that's about it. But now um, uh, we can find that they are talking business now. You have been attacking them all this while, and then now we shed bombs and it's in the hundreds now where you can't even control it all right when you can't even defend yourself so therefore has the balance changed now they are at par with the aggressor i want to hear from uh, dr sharif because i got to know that the bombs that was created that were created uh, is actually uh, are actually created by the Philistine themselves, and the name of the bombs is called Ayash. So, can you please give us some, uh, share some light to this, uh, Dr. Sharif? Yes. Actually, uh, the Palestinian called this uh, as rocket, but it is uh, just uh, home, ho homemade uh, missiles. Yes. This is what they can do. It, it is. It is a, a natural development of the resistance, of the long way of resistance. The Palestinian resist mm -hmm. the occupation since more than 90 years because they start to resist the Zionists before, uh, during the British occupation. The British occupation started 1918 till 1947 or 48. Then they, they have uh, gained experience during the resistance with, uh, against the Jews. But we should always remember that the Israel is the top country and the top state war, uh, armed in the region. And it has very, very war jet, very uh, brutal war jet, and they use all brutal things. Israel always try to, 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 to make Hasbara and to make uh, advertising and uh, a promotion that they are under under Gaza rockets and uh, Gaza is a, a huge power. No, Gaza is not a huge power, but they have a, a very strong base of of faith on 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 the right. They have a very strong faith on their right to resist, to not uh, be killed, silenced. Even now, even uh, the Palestinian factions, especially Hamas and Al Qassam, uh, try to respond on the Israeli aggression and Israeli attack. The balance of powers is still for the uh, it is it is on the Israeli. Israeli ha Israelis has more power and more uh, aggression against Gaza. And if we look to the videos, we can see. It is in Gaza raining missiles from the uh, war jets of Israel. And what yeah, the, the Palestinians do, they, yes, they just fire uh, homemade uh, missiles. And it sometimes, sometimes make balance, balance of uh, fear, balance of, they try to stop Israel. When, when the resistance mm -hmm. say, I will uh, target the airport of Israel, and they send the muscle. The muscle is not enough, not not smart enough to reach the airport, but it can uh, freeze the working in the airport. This is the resistance mm -hmm. of the weak people who believe in their right. They can harm their enemy, but 
they are still need a lot of power to be equal with their enemy. The only yeah. thing I think that, uh, yeah. the resistance in Gaza is uh, has from uh, from the power is the power of the right, the power of Haq, the power of the land, because they are seeking to retain their land and their people to their land. What's your take uh, with about this, uh, Stuart? Well, I, I, again, we have seen it before, time and time again. And you know, I think it's time now for the Palestinians primarily, but for all of us who support them to, to say enough is enough. Yesterday, I happened to be watching the very pro-Israel BBC and uh, the mm. anchor of the particular program asking uh, a representative, I can't remember which uh, of which side, but where do we go from here was the, uh, was the question. And my answer to that would be an independent, sovereign, viable, contiguous Palestinian state, which has of course been made impossible by the oppressors, by the illegal occupiers Israel, because they want it all for themselves and they're trying to take it all for themselves, as we've been talking about, uh, or a greater, not a greater Israel, but a greater Palestine, because that's what it is, where, and this is actually Hamas policy, because I don't believe that Hamas is a terrorist organization, by the way, because it's not. Hamas has supported the two-state solution, which no one can support anymore, because as I say, it can't be put into practice. And uh, Hamas has a really good idea about a future greater Palestine, whereby the constitution of that state guarantees all ethnic groups, including Jews, their rights under that constitution. Their, their rights and their human rights, their rights of worship, you name it, Everyone is guaranteed their right to do that constitution. And this is a situation that is the most viable, as I can see it right now. But whatever solution we're going to promote, it is the Palestinians having their own state and determining their own future and deciding their future for themselves and not under occupation, not being oppressed, not being subjugated and not being persecuted every day by people who were actually imported into the area. You know, another aspect of this whole issue, and that is, no, I'm saying issue and not conflict or war for the reasons I mentioned earlier, is that we don't just go back to 1967. Dr. Sharif was in, into this uh, a moment ago too. We don't just go back to 1948. We go back to the end of the 19th century when a racist ideology called Zionism and a movement for that uh, 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 ideology was formed and coerced and infiltrated into the British government of the time, which then led to, at the beginning of the 20th century, the Balfour Declaration of 1917. And when the British then got from their spoils of the First World War, the mandate for Palestine from the Ottoman Empire, and then promised it to the Jews, that's where things really started. And so we have, we can't just talk in terms of today, which of course the Israelis want us to do. They try to play at the same time as playing the victim, which they certainly are not. They are the perpetrators, but they play the victim and the victim part all the time to deflect from the actual issues and what has led to where we are today. And the whole situation that was created by that United Kingdom colonial power by giving away the mandate for Palestine to Jews coming from mainly Europe and, 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 the, and Eastern Europe, Russia and so on, uh, because there were so many sympathies, of course, and, right, and understandably so, that people had great sympathies for the Jews of Europe who had gone through the Holocaust. And therefore, after the Second World War, uh, they managed to get through the United Nations, this carving up of the mandate in Palestine, whereby the Jews were to be given uh, fit around 56% and the Palestinians 44 of their country, 44% of their country, whereby they were promised the, the not so viable parts of where the soil, the, the, the farming land was not 
of so arable as what was promised to, to the Jews. But of course, again, they have been dead set from the outset not to accept anything like a Palestinian state or sharing Palestine with the Palestinians. So we're seeing the beginnings of what I was into just a moment ago. The the Israel is, a, is, is an apartheid state. It has separate rules, laws and regulations that apply to Palestinians that don't apply to Jews. They give less money to, to, to Jewish towns, uh, to, to Palestinian towns, I'm sorry, rather to what they give to Jewish towns. Across the board, there is discrimination and persecution of Palestinians, a discrimination that is the opposite effect when it comes to the Jewish population. Roads, special roads for, for settlers and for Jews that Palestinians are not allowed to use. Roadblocks, checkpoints, just for Palestinians, not for Jews, throughout mm -hmm. Palestine. Uh, it is an apartheid state which was entrenched three years ago in July 2018 with the national state law. And as apartheid started in South Africa, fortunately we saw the end of it in 1994, but in the same way as apartheid South Africa tried to suppress the, 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 the black, the majority black and colored population by putting them into sort of Bantu stands, as they called them, creating a sort of a Swiss cheese of the country. That is what is going on now with all the yeah. illegal settlement and the ethnic cleansing of the Israeli government, which will finally lead, as the thing I was talking about earlier, the final solution of totally ridding Palestine of Palestinians. The situation is still the same, I think. Okay, now we'll just take a break for a while. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the human impact of the clashes between these two Israelis and the Palestinian uh, forces. Okay, so we'll wait for a while, have a, probably a, sip, have a sip of water, and then we'll come back after this to continue in our international uh, affairs. Okay, we're back. Now we continue to talk about the impact of uh, the uh, impact of the war, or about to be war, if not uh, just a clash, between these two forces. Now maybe uh, Dr. Sharif can give us an insight of the impact of these bombs, bombings between two places, to both sides, to the Palestinians and also to the Israelis. Yes. Uh, actually, Akhi Nizal, uh, I uh, object the word clashes. It is not the clashes between the Palestinian and Israelis. It is uh, an aggression, an Israeli aggression against the Palestinian people who are the owner of the land. And it is aggression in all means. The one who bombs the Palestinian uh, in their land, in their uh, camps, in their buildings, uh, he is. It is not not a clash. It's the one who who prevent the Palestinian to worship uh, in their mosque. Uh, I will give you something. Uh, and all, uh, I I lived in Gaza more than thirty years. In this this uh, thirty years, I couldn't visit Masjid Al Aqsa even at one time. Because Israel prevent the Palestinian to pray in Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak, and they put all restrictions to to prevent the Palestinian from practicing any aspect of uh, human life, even movement, travel, going to worship, enjoying their country. They prevent the Palestinian all aspects of uh, life. 
and when the when Israel start its war and its aggression against Gaza, the cost of the humanity will be uh, more and more and increase. Just if we if we have a look on uh, on the number of uh, shaheed, the who martyrs who lost their lives. Now, just in three four days, we lost 120 shaheed. More than 33 of them are children, uh, nine of them are women, uh, more than 850 wounded. Some of the worshippers in Al Masjid Al Aqsa they lost their eyes, they lost their arms. So the 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 cost of the, the humanity cost by the Israeli aggression is very high. And there is some aspects we should highlight. The displacement, when you destroy the homes, you cause, you destroy uh, dreams, you destroy lives, you destroy uh, hopes, you destroy uh, a whole of family. You, you, Israel, Israel uh, cause the displacement. And it is very painful for the Palestinian who, who, uh, who is suffering the displacement from a uh, long time, from 1948. I, I will share with you a, a very, very special experience for the Palestinian. I'm a refugee and my father and my mother was refugee, was, were refugees. When the refugee or the Palestinian have a house, he built house, he will reach this stage by the most difficult conditions because they stripped from their lands, they stripped from their wealth, then they should begin from zero to build their houses. And when they build their house, then Israel come to bomb this house. So how many uh, orphans will, uh, will result in? How many women will lose their uh, family uh, family members, how, how many, it is very difficult. And sometimes many families or all member of families, all members of the families will be uh, died shaheed. From my personal experience in 2008, I, just, I, I always remember, I will not forget this moment. In 6th of January, 2009, during the first Israeli war in Gaza. At 6 a.m., there was a very a huge uh, bomb, bombing to one building of, of our neighbors. Then I went, I found the body was jumped outside of the, of the buildings, and we could find 23 bodies, 23 bodies of the family, the grandfather, the grandmother, the fathers, the, the mothers, the children. It was the most painful experience for me by the Israeli soldiers and by the Israeli uh, attack. So the, the humanity uh, cost is, is high and every time it become higher and higher. One more thing I will give you. Now when Israel caused this disability for any Palestinian, this is a policy of, by Israel. Why? When someone of the family become disabled, this will make the whole family are busy in his issues and his affairs. Mm -hmm. Now, so they are targeting the eyes, they are, tar are targeting the arms, they are targeting, sometimes they initially want to kill the Palestinian, but want, want to, 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 to convert him disabled, to make all the family suffering this disability. So the bill of the war, of the Israeli war, of, of the Israeli aggression is very high, very high in all aspects. And we cannot hear to, to speak, but we just speak sometimes in, in, in uh, number language. And it is very, very unhuman. But so I just said there are, there, there, there are 120 shaheed 
there are 120 shaheed. I didn't mention their names. They are not numbers. But Israel, by their aggression, by their huge and massive aggression, they wanted to convert the lives, the 120 member of the families, 120 of people, just numbers to say there are 120 of Shaheed by Israeli. So we call, we call the, the, the free world to stop Israeli aggression, to reduce the human, the human cost, to reduce the, uh, the humanity, uh, the, 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 criminal, the, the criminal Israeli, uh, we call all free world to stop this. Okay. Stuart, you as a, a, a person that I would say have some sort of a heart towards the Palestinian, all right? And you are also a foreign, uh, a foreigner that, uh, at the same time. How do, you, how do you look at this? The impact of the war towards the Palestinian we have seen, we've seen. But does, I mean, did something happen towards the uh, Israelis as well that make them think hard now not to meddle too much, too far towards the Palestinian? What do you think? Yeah, that's a, 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 again a very good question, Nizal. Um, I'd just like to first, um, uh, in conjunction with what Dr. Sharif was just saying, I'd just like to say a couple of things. You know, uh, uh, Netanyahu, who's clinging on to power through this whole business uh, to save his corrupt skin, as I was talking about earlier, he has told uh, every Israeli military person, soldier, th that they can act with impunity. They can act with impunity in the same way, actually, as the whole state of Israel does every time when there are these uh, uh, ass assaults, pounding of Gaza, especially the pulverizing of Gaza, especially uh, are, are carried out. I also think it was uh, very interesting that Dr. Sharif raised the issue of we are not numbers. This is actually a new, mm -hmm. interesting a Palestinian youth organization now. Um, and it, I think it's a, a really key theme. We see on our TV screens at times like this, the numbers rising of dead and injured. And of course, we tend to focus on the dead, uh, which in some ways we should, because the Israelis have killed thousands, thousands of Palestinians during the years uh, with uh, completely uh, no discrimination between the genders or if they are children, because they have been many women and children included there, because they, don't, they just don't care. And, uh, uh, but what we don't think about is the, n the numbers of injured and they are maimed for life. The tragedies, the personal tragedies behind these numbers. Not only the dead that people are going to miss their loved ones, but also the injured maimed for life, losing eyes, losing limbs for the rest of their lives. But you know, there's another aspect that isn't highlighted so much. They lose their homes, as Dr. Sharif was actually talking about. It. They lose their homes. And what is in their homes? All their memories, their souvenirs, their keepsakes, their whole lives. Or in the, we know ourselves in, in here. I have a lot of my own memories and, and things that are, 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 are of great sentimental value to me. And if this was bombed, and, and all that would go too. So they are left without all that as well. They are, it, it is a greater tragedy, that is, that is what I'm trying to say, than just the dead and the maimed. There are all these other aspects to it that, that the Israelis certainly obviously don't care about, but we, the rest of us, should and, and take that into account when we are uh, viewing what is going on. And, um, yeah. and, and, but getting back to how Israeli, there are Israeli people. There are Israeli people who don't agree with all this. There are Jewish, certainly there are Jewish people in the world who do not agree, who say, Israel does not represent me and does not act for me. One uh, was on the Navi Mamara, the, the ship that tried to get into Gaza in 2010. Uh, a lady called Heidi Epstein, who was a Holocaust survivor, was on that boat 
she unfortunately left this matter. But she was a typical Jewish lady who was a Holocaust survivor. And there are many of those who have uh, said that Israel is not uh, representing me or doesn't act for me, as I say. And there are organizations in America where, you know, there's a large Jewish community and, and a very active Jewish community, uh, certainly for supporting Israel, that's for sure. We see that in American politics. But there are many good, decent Jewish people. For example, an organization called Jewish Voice for Peace, JVP, that I have been supporting for many years as a non-Jew. There is a relatively new one now called If Not Now, uh, and they do fantastic work in support of Palestine and the Palestinians. Of course, Satan Yahoo, Netanyahu calls them bleeding liberals and self-hating Jews because that's the sort of contempt that he has for anyone with any kind of humanity in them. So there, and, and I've heard that there are now um, uh, Palestinians and, and Jewish Israelis uh, getting together to try to stop the rioting and so on that is going on. On the other hand, I must admit, and I, I suspect that Dr. Sharif will agree with me here, that it, to a certain extent, I am um, please, please is maybe not the right word, but I am not uh, concerned. I, I am. I think it's about time then that the Israel, as they are called, the Israeli Palestinians, the Palestinian Arabs that are within the confines of what is supposed to be Israel. The 20, 22, 25%, it's a little difficult to know exactly how many, but the, they are about 20 to 25% of the population of, of, of Israel. The Palestinians who are now also rising up and in solidarity with their Gazan Palestinian uh, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, and in the occupied territory, their brothers and sisters in the occupied territories, all together now rising up showing the Israeli uh, racist supremacist masters and the world that they are not tolerating this anymore. Again, enough is enough. All right, very good, very good. All right, we'll take a break because after this, I wish, I wish to share with the audience a, an interview, or rather not an interview, a, an expression from the heart of a Christian Palestinians to the world, especially to the Israelis and to the Palestinian. Maybe we'll just wait for a while, in a few seconds, we'll come back and we'll show you the video. God bless you. This is Father Monk Antonius Hananiya, Palestinian from Akka, Galilee. I congratulate our brothers and sisters in Islam, Eid Fatur Said, and I congratulate our Palestinian people for fighting in Palestine and outside Palestine. Remember, we are one people. I'm Palestinian. To our Palestinian, we fight together in every way possible. Zionist, I want to tell you something. You must go back to Europe. You must go back to Czechoslovakia, Poland, Germany. You must seek what you lost. Homes, they kicked you out. And leave your homes in Palestine to the Palestinians. Do you want to threaten the world with your Samson? plan to destroy the world with nuclear bombs. Are you so desperate? You're so desperate. You're suicidal. You don't want to live. Go back to Europe. We are taking Palestine. And we want to tell you something. Repent. 
go back to your mind, to your heart. Repent before God. May God enlighten you. But definitely, we are victorious and we will win this particular war. Wow. There's a strong statement yes, wow. coming in from a Philistine Christian. Okay, before I talk, uh, I'll give uh, Dr. Sharif to say a few words about this. Let's listen to a British guy <laughs> who has mentioned about <laughs> Jewish support and now a Christian coming in and saying more or less the same thing. So what's your take, uh, Stuart? Well, I say my reaction is immediately uh, like yours, Nisal. Wow, wow, that went straight into my heart straight into my heart. He echoes my sentiments and feelings entirely. I am not religious, as you know, Nizal, but I was born into the Anglican Church. And I do know this, that uh, Christians are also persecuted in Palestine. It's not just Muslims being persecuted. It is Christians, a large minority, actually, and Dr. Sharif can bear me out on this, a large minority of Palestinians are, in fact, Christians. Hanan Ashrawi, one of the leading Palestinian spokespeople, is, is Christian. Uh, uh, Yasser Arafat's wife was Christian. Um, George Abash of the, the, the People's Front for the Liberation of Palestine, unfortunately not with us anymore. So, you know, uh, Christians have played a leading role and play a leading role in the struggle for Palestine. And as we've seen with the monk now too. And in fact, he knows, as does the Pope, the Pope recently, uh, last Sunday, in his address uh, at the Vatican in Rome, you could read between the lines, and he has said more clearly before, that he does not agree with what is going on. <laughs> not just not agree, he condemns, basically, what is going on in Palestine. Because he knows too, as the head of the Catholic Church, that Christians are being squeezed. They are t the, the Israelis are attempting to squeeze Christians out of Palestine as well. It's the same mentality that they have, you know, what they get sometimes refugees from uh, Africa and black people and not to mention the black Jews that are discriminated against within Israel, by the way, are treated as third or fourth class citizens because they're black. So the, the, the racist supremacism that exists can, can uh, go beyond Palestinians. And when black refugees seek asylum in Israel from uh, African countries, uh, you know what they get called? They get called intruders, mm. invaders, infiltrators. Basically, it's racism towards them too. So uh, I... I am absolutely overwhelmed and, and I found that absolutely brilliant and he put it, it was from his heart obviously to um, putting the whole situation so very, very well. All right. Dr. Sharif? Yes, Akhi uh, Nizal, I, I want to tell you and the, the people who are watching us, uh, I was uh, born in Gaza and in the uh, area called Az Zaytun. In Az Zaytun area where I lived, there was a mosque beside a church. Then when I went to the Islamic University of Gaza, Islamic University of Gaza, one of my colleagues in, uh, in engineering faculty was a, a Christian, his name George, I, I hope he is safe now. So, we, we as Palestinians consider the Israeli is occupation, not that we fight them, not because they are Jews or different in our religious, because they are occupiers. And we remember very well, and we studied very well, that the Jews were prevented to enter Jerusalem during Byzantine, Byzantine period before Islam. When Umar ibn al-Khattab opened Baytul Maqdis and conquered Baytul Maqdis, the Muslims allowed to do, the Jews to come to Baytul Maqdis and visit and practice their life, their lives in, in, uh, in Baytul Maqdis. When Andalusia fallen and, and the Spanish start to, to, to torture the Jews and Muslims, the Jews came to Baytul Maqdis to be protected under under Ottoman Empire. So we have no no religious problem with any religious, even they are Jews if they are Christian. The problem with 
the occupiers. Brother Nizal, we have good relationship now with the Christians, but previously we had very bad relationship with Britain, the Christian, because they occupied Palestine and gave it to the settlers, to the Zionists. So it is not strange, not strange to find one of the Christians pray among Muslims in Al Quds to protect the Muslims when the Israeli attack the worshippers. It is not difficult to find some Christians fast Ramadan. They don't eat anything during Ramadan and they read the Quran. It is not so strange to find a, one of the leaders of the Islamic resistance in Gaza go and seek shelter, shelter in a church in Gaza during the war. One of the pubs in, uh, in, in Palestine is very known for Muslims. He is Father Manuel Musallam. All the Muslim factions and all the Muslim resistance uh, who love resistance and who love the, 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 the Palestinian issue go to his home and discuss and he always support the Palestinian rights. So the problem exclusively with the Zionists not with any religious. We are tolerant with all religious, even the Jews. We, we, we the Palestinians, used to have friends and used to have people and coexistence with the Jews before the occupation. I believe if we finish and end the occupation, all problems will be resolved easily, inshallah ta'ala. Even the, not the, the problems in Palestine or the Middle East, I believe the problem in the world, because mm. I, I, I knew that the, the state who armed uh, Myanmar to attack the Rohingya is Israel. The Israeli state, the main one who supply Myanmar uh, Myanmar army by arms and weapons to displace and to 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 injust the the Rohingya in their homeland. So mm -hmm. it is a great a great video, and it is not strange for me as Palestinian. We as Palestinian believe the problem in Zionists, not in any other uh, religious. Very Can I just add a couple of things? Can I, yes, Nizar, yes. Yes. Imagine Can I now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I often wonder, you know, like, because like, you see, in America, the, the all powerful America, they determine so much of this if, by various means, and not to mention media, of course, and the, the vast majority of, of corporate media in the world is pro Israel. Uh, the Christian Zionists. That to me is kind of contra is a sort of a contradiction in terms because they don't know, I don't think, that this large minority of Palestinians are Christian. So why are they, they are not concerned about their Christian sisters and brothers in Palestine? Another That's another it. fact. At the time of the Balfour Declaration, the beginning of the 20th century, uh, when it was when Palestine was left alone by outsiders, was still Palestine as such. About six percent of that population was Jewish, and at that time, that six percent Jewish and the rest being Muslim and Christian and Druze and Greek Orthodox and all kinds of, uh, of, of, of faiths and ethnicities got on really well together. They partied together, they ate together, they socialized together, they met in each other's houses. And the Jews of that time started getting to hear about this Zionist movement. They didn't want in any way whatsoever this thing called Israel to ever be forced upon them, the Jews themselves, because they knew what would happen. And of course, it did happen. We've, we've seen that. And one of the greatest Jews of all time, Albert Einstein, warned the world, don't let this thing happen. But they did. And now we see the results. <laughs> exactly. All right, we have about a few minutes more to go. Uh, round up uh, opinion of each and every one of 
you. Um, we know I, it warms my heart to listen to this uh, father. I, I can't really uh, capture his name, something like uh, Ron uh, Antonio Haninia from Galileo. Uh, it warms my heart to, to hear him say those things, which we have never really hear directly from a person who calls himself father to the Christian um, uh, faith. Now, um, maybe last words from both of you. Uh, I hope this particular situation would not end in uh, full-fledged uh, or full-scale war, but your take on this, your last words before we bid goodbye for this particular session. All right. Who first? <laughs> maybe we, we'll give it we'll give it to we'll give it to the to the um the the uh, the foreigner <laughs> from the foreign okay. land that has brought upon the the Palestinian <laughs> maybe you, Nisal, I never maybe still like a few words I never feel like a foreigner with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah, are brothers yeah. we are brothers I agree with you okay I will, talk, I will right. try to be brief you can see that the time is going I one thing I think secular Jews in Israel have to watch out because the, the, the prowling, marauding, extremist, radical, fundamentalist, orthodox settlers are on the move. They see their real opportunities here and they are being encouraged and supported by Netanyahu and the far right because Netanyahu, now the, the government of Israel is extremely, the Naftali Bennett's and the Avigdor Liebermans are running the place. And so an arming, even arming the, the illegal colonialist settlers to, to, to harm and, and, and kill uh, uh, the, the, the Palestinians now, the, the, even Israeli Palestinians. That's what they're doing. We saw on the street the other day, one pa Israeli uh, Palestinian on the ground and unconscious, they were still beating him because they have no, they, they have no, feel, no human feelings. These people are belligerent, brutal, violent people. They've been brought up with that. They've been brought up with that. And they are being, they're the ones running the country now. So secular, moderate Jews who are not sectarian like these secular people, they better watch out because first it'll be the Palestinians, then it'll be them. It'll be their turn next. So they better watch out. The other final point I'd just like to make before um, my time is up is that the Americans seem to be now trying to defend their indefensible stance on the whole situation by talking about, well, you know, Hamas is not the leadership of the Palestinians. Uh, you know, th this, this old thing that they tried to use before about, well, we don't know who to talk to in Palestine. Is it Fatah, the PLO, or is it, uh, is it Hamas? And they can't reconcile and so on. But what they, they choose to forget is, whilst they're trying to make that point, actually, when there was an election in Palestine in 2006, Hamas won from the people of the whole of what is sort of now Palestine. Uh, those in the occupied territories in the West Bank and East Jerusalem uh, and, and those in, in Gaza, they voted for Hamas uh, in, in those elections. And OK, it's a long story what happened after that. A coup was carried out with the help of Israel. Uh, and, and we got back to this stalemate again that we have now. But I think it's important to point that also out. Mm. All right, Dr. Sharif, last words from you. Yes, last word. Uh, thank you, Brother Nizal, for uh, this opportunity. My last word, uh, Israel should not be a uh, free hand in its aggression against the Palestinian. We as uh, free uh, people and the free uh, lovers should punish Israel. And we have a lot to do to punish Israel and not leave it uncountable. We should uh, reactivate boycott. BDS movement is very good uh, means to punish Israel and to not uh, leave Israel doing uh, all aggressions and attacks against Gaza. Israel should pay the price of its crimes against the humanity, against the freedom against the human rights. We, uh, we seek uh, and we uh, encourage all people to do their best to carry the Palestinian issue 
from their uh, laptops and from their social media to the ground, to, to the action. We should put pressure on the politicians to act better against Israel, to stop their aggression against the, the people in Jerusalem, in the West Bank, and to stop their attack in Gaza. It is not, uh, not acceptable to stand to watch the number of death increasing. We should take action. We should uh, perform better than what we are doing. We have big opportunity now. The social media gave us a, a very nice uh, uh, opportunity to be engaged in the battle. Now, after Israel uh, launched the strike on the Palestinian, we get the, the images. We should not uh, be uh, familiar with this. We should uh, put pressure against Israel, against the international world. We should address international world. We should also collect donation and channel donation to those who, who lost their uh, bodies, who lost their lives, who, those who, who uh, lost their homes. The necessary uh, and the needs in Gaza is very high and we should act better than what we are doing. And thank you. Good, good. This and that spirit, um, Brother Sharif, uh, and also Stuart, uh, the foundation that I'm involved in is called uh, Yayasan Ilhambudi in Malay, or in English, it's Foundation for the Inspiring Virtue, is now on a campaign. We are starting a campaign. It's called Campaign Selamatkan Keluarga Gaza. It's actually Save the Family of Gaza campaign. And it's exactly uh, it's so simple uh, to ensure that their food on the table for these Palestinian families. We are seeking support from everyone to just contribute 100 ringgit per family of five to eight people, right? Five to eight people. And that is for the supply of raw materials uh, for seven days, for a week, just 100 ringgit. And you can feed the family, a family of uh, Gaza uh, with raw material or raw food and uh, inshallah god willing that if this can happen we can support about 250 uh, families all over gaza but anyway with the spirit that's given to me from the discussion uh, from uh, you steward and of course from brother uh, our dr sharif i have even uh, more enthusiasm to believe that the future is still there Hope is still there Inshallah. and the harmony between all religion and all people of all ethnic can be achieved. Thank you very much for joining me in this particular discussion. The title is you, Under Attack. Uh, and uh, um, it's just under attack. But the ones is really under attack is the humanity in all human, in all the people of the world to understand that your humanity has been attacked now come forward and save humanity from atrocities. Thank you very much again, gentlemen. I hope to see you again, Ed Mubarak. And before we end, I just want to end this with this message again by Father Ronk Antonio Haninia from Galilo. All right, thank you very much. And let's listen again to this great man who has spoken his thoughts about what's supposed to be done. Okay, until we meet again, Nizal Muhammad here signing off. Bye. God bless you. This is Father Monk Antonius Hananiya, Palestinian from Akka, Galilee. I congratulate our brothers and sisters in Islam, Eid Fatur Said, and I congratulate our Palestinian people for fighting in Palestine and outside Palestine. Remember, we are one people. I'm Palestinian, you are Palestinian, we fight together in every way possible. Zionist, I want to tell you something. You must go back to Europe. You must go back to Czechoslovakia, Poland, Germany. You must seek what you lost, homes, they kicked you out. And leave your homes in Palestine to the Palestinians. 
Do you want to threaten the world with your Samson plan? To destroy the world with nuclear bombs? Are you so desperate? You're so desperate. You're suicidal. You don't want to live. Go back to Europe. We are taking Palestine. And we want to tell you something. Repent. Go back to your mind, to your heart. Repent before God. May God enlighten you. But definitely, we are victorious. And we will win this particular war.